again, welcome back. It's Diane at Minerva and welcome to another sew along. So today what I'd like to share with you is this fabulous wardrobe builder pattern. So it's a fitted t-shirt and as you can see it has five necklines, three body lengths and six sleeve lengths. Now I think this is a fabulous addition to anybody's wardrobe. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to make a long sleeve version with a round neckline and a short sleeve version with a V neckline. Now, to do these two projects, we're going to be using two different fabrics and I'm going to share those with you now. So first up, we have this beautiful viscose jersey knit in red. Now I think this is a fabulous colour to go with all kinds of things in your wardrobe and I don't know if you're like me but I love red and I've got lots of skirts and trousers and even jeans I think this just goes so well with everything. But if that's not your thing there are so many colours available. So there are 27 colours for you to choose from and one available on pre-order. Now out of the two fabrics this one is the thinner of the two. So I will be using this fabric to make the short sleeve version of the t-shirt. I think this particular fabric is ideal for the summer and spring months so this is why I'm going to make the short sleeves and the v-neck because I think that will be really adaptable for that time of year. So next up is this beautiful cotton lycra jersey knit. So this one is quite a bit thicker quite a lot more stability to this one. So I'm thinking autumn winter. So for this particular fabric I'm going to do the long sleeve version as I think that will be really useful for layering, wearing under dresses and cardigans and sweatshirts. So that'll be really adaptable for the winter months. This colour is cobalt but it comes in 108 different colours so you're bound to find something that you love. Lots of colours to choose from there. There are also 14 colours available for pre-order in this fabric also. So if you don't find something you want, I'd be very surprised. Now, as always, you want to go and prep your fabric first. So wash it and dry it as you normally would because we don't want any mistakes further down the line. We don't want all your hard work to get shrunk afterwards. Now, there isn't usually much shrinkage with fabrics, but a tiny amount can make all the difference. So make sure you don't skip that important stage. Now, back to the pattern. So, a fitted t-shirt, wardrobe by me, wardrobe builder. And as I said, in the blue cobalt, we're going to be making the long sleeve version with a round neck. And then in the red fabric, we're going to be making this short sleeve version with a v-neck. And that way, we'll have lots of options for our wardrobe over the coming months. Now the pattern has got a range of sizes. So all the way from zero up to size 24. So make sure that before you begin, you check your measurements. Don't just go on your standard dress size, what you would buy off the rack. Check your bust, your waist and your hips and compare it with the chart and pick the size that corresponds on here. When you've done that, you're ready to take out your pieces and select your sizes. Now, as you can see, we have different markings for the different sizes. Make a note of this and what I sometimes do to make it easier, and this is a really good tip for a beginner, is to get a pen and mark on your pattern your size before you begin cutting and this will help you stop you having errors when you begin to cut and going off on the wrong line. So that is something you're going to do now. So select your size, get yourself a marker pen and mark your size on all those pattern pieces. Now, I think this pattern is going to be fabulous for a beginner. We've got simple pieces, clean necklines and you can choose the sleeve and the neckline that you think is right for your ability. And then when you've had a go, you've got all these options to choose from. 
So let's go ahead and cut out our pattern pieces now. Now, first up here, we have our back piece. Now, as you can see, there are two pieces joined together. So in this particular pattern, you have your bottom piece for the t-shirt and then you have your variety of different necklines. So what you do is you join the top part to the bottom part, cut out your back like so. So to cut your front piece you need to attach the v-neck top to the top bottom and here you're going to place that on the fold again. Now your sleeve, as you can see, is full length and it has all the different sleeve lengths marked on it. So I didn't want to cut into that, so what I've done is i just folded it up to where I wanted it. So I wanted it here for a cap sleeve and then I cut out my sleeve underneath. And you need to make sure that you mark these notches on at the top as well. And there's one here as well. Make sure that you get those markings in the right place. Now, one thing to note is that on certain neck variations you're going to need a band. Now this is not marked on the pattern pieces but it is mentioned here. So for the round neck and the v-neck, one of which I'm doing. So you're going to need to cut two strips on the bias. Now on the bias means you'll cut it on the diagonal of the fabric so the grain line's going straight you cut that out on the diagonal now as you can see here mine is four centimeters wide now I've cut two pieces to be on the safe side because we don't know what size you're going to be doing so four centimeters wide and I've done them 73 in length Now I've cut two and I'm going to join those together. Now you're going to need to change to a jersey needle or a ballpoint needle. I have these ones that I've changed to already. So I would go for the lighter one in this particular fabric because this is quite light. Now if you don't do this you'll find that your needle may jump around and you may get some gaps in your stitching. So it's always best to change to a jersey or ballpoint needle first. Now, if you order this as a bundle to make this project, so if you're going to do that, I suggest you save this video to come back later. And all the products will be linked below. So you'll get the needles, the cotton that matches, the pattern, and of course the fabric of your choosing. Now, something else to note when you're sewing on stretch fabrics is your stitch that you're going to use. Now wherever possible it's good to use a serger or overlocker if you have one but if you're a beginner you may not have one of these yet or you may not be intended on buying one. That's not a problem. What you need to do is you need to select a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. So on this particular machine you need to uh, select... You will need to select the stitch width so I'm going to do that quite narrow, just between one and two. And then your stitch length, again, I'm going to make that smaller. I'm going to put it to a three. And then the stitch you're going to want is a zigzag. Now you may have a particular zigzag stitch on your machine. Consult your manual, have a play around on a piece of scrap and see what suits you best. Now I'm going to stitch together the two strips that I cut out for our neckband. So you're going to stitch them just along there with a small seam allowance. Now this pattern, stated in the instructions, has a seven millimetre seam allowance allowed all the way around. So please bear that in mind if you're used to working with standard patterns because it's usually a 1.5. So seven millimetres, so it's less than a centimetre so please make sure that you mark that and that you're aware of that. Maybe with some tape on your machine or make yourself a little guide. Okay? So our next job is we're going to join the shoulder seams together. So make sure you've got right sides facing. 
Now you can tell which is the right side because it has slightly smoother a woven appearance than the wrong side. Have a little play around with it before you begin to get yourself familiar with which is the right side and which is the wrong side. It also helps when you're cutting your pattern pieces when you notice this to put a pin on the right side in a certain colour so that you're aware of that. Match up your shoulder seams, make a note of that 7mm seam allowance and then stitch both shoulders together. Now to make your neckline accurate what I would do here is measure with your tape measure around the back and all along the front of that V. Get your measurement and then make sure that the strip that we cut for your neck band corresponds with that and cut it to the right size. Try and do this without pulling the fabric because we don't want it stretched out. So measure it accurately then cut your band the same size. When you've done that you're going to fold it and you're going to stitch down here with a small seam allowance. Now fold your back in half and make a little notch at that centre back just there. And what you're going to do next is you'll open that up so you've got the right side facing upwards. Now take your band that you have just created and fold it so the seam is on the inside. You're going to take that centre seam of the band and match it with that notch that you've just made at the back. We're now going to attach that with pins. All the way around without pulling and then stitch that around your neckline. And it is important that when you get to the shoulder seam that you turn your shoulder seams to the back of the garment as you stitch around the neck. Now when you've done that as you can see you will have a little bit of excess on the inside. So trim that neatly and finish it with a zigzag or an overlock stitch if you prefer. And then when we've done that you're going to stitch that down towards the top away from the neck. So the band is here, we're going to stitch here just below it as close as you can, nice and neat to give a nice neat finish. Now you have your band stitched on, you're going to fold the front of your t-shirt in half again and with right sides together on the wrong side you're going to place a little pin here and you're going to stitch at an angle there. Then we're going to press that fabric to the wrong side, secure it down with a few hand stitches if need be. So I'm going to do that now. Now you need to get your sleeve piece with the right side facing down on the top it should be on your machine bed with the right side of the seam facing up. So right sides go together you're going to match the notch, the centre notch, with the shoulder seam here, pin that, and then the notch on your sleeve armhole with the notch on your sleeve piece here. Pin that the whole way around before you begin stitching. So now you're going to join the side seams and the sleeves. So, get your underarm sleeve and match them together like this. Pin all the way down the side seam, matching as you go, all the way to the bottom. You're going to sew from the bottom up the side, match that seam under the arm and into the sleeve there. Back on with your stretch stitch for this part. So there we have the v-neck version with the curved hem and now we're going to make the long sleeve version with a round neck 
in the thicker jersey fabric. So now we're going to make the long sleeved version of the top. So we're going to do it with long sleeves, like in the diagram here, and we're going to do the round neck. So now we're going to begin cutting. And this is in the heavier fabric, the jersey knit. Now here you see, you have your sleeve piece. So this is the grain line. You need to cut two of this on the fold. Mark these uh, markings here and here at the centre of the top of the sleeve. We're doing a full length version in this one. So cut it out as you would normally. But if you have long arms as I do, I tend to cut it out a little bit longer just to be on the safe side because we're all different sizes. Now we have our front piece which again we're going to cut on the fold, mark our markings and here at the bottom I have just folded it up because on the previous version I had that curved hemline. Another thing that I've done is that I've cut it out a little bit higher here because I know that I like my neckline a little bit higher so you can do that you can adjust it just bring it up a little bit higher if you feel that that neckline is just a little bit low for you so here as you can see for the back piece it was just a case of swapping out this front curved neckline for the back piece joining that on lengthen or shorten here and then cutting out your back piece. So you've got the grain line going this way again. You've got it cut out on the fold here and you add on your pattern piece, so pin it on. So these are all adjustable depending on which neckline or style of t-shirt you want. Here again we have the neck band. Now as I said this is not marked on the pattern so what you have to do is cut yourself a long strip on the diagonal, on the bias of the fabric. So cut it on the diagonal because that's where you have the most stretch. Right, so we're going to assemble our t-shirt. So I have my front piece and I have my back piece. Make sure that you find the right side of your fabric so it's right sides together and we are joining at the shoulder seam. So now we're going to attach our sleeve pieces so check that you find the right side of your fabric again and then you're going to match your top notch to the centre seam on the shoulder and you're going to match this notch to the back of the t-shirt. So pin on both sleeves and we're going to sew those, those on now. So back tack again at the start, keeping with that zigzag stitch. You can pull the fabric out slightly as you go and it eases in nicely because it's a stretch fabric and you've got your stretch needle in. Take your pins out as you go. When you've got your sleeve in, fold it over, right sides together and find that underarm seam on both sides and match them up. Then you're going to place a pin here then pin all the way down the sleeve and all the way along the side seam to the bottom and then we're going to stitch from the bottom of the t-shirt go through that underarm seam match them together all the way to the end of the sleeve and we're going to do that now so back tack again at the bottom 7mm seam allowance all the way up so now you have this part of your t-shirt assembled, you can crack on with your neckline. So we get our piece that we cut earlier on the bias, four centimetres wide, and we're going to measure the neckline to check that it's correct. So if you start at the shoulder seam on one side, and without stretching or pulling, pin that the whole way around, and then when you get to the other side and you have your accurate measurement, you're going to put right sides together 
and we're going to stitch down here seven millimeter seam allowance. If it's too big, trim off any excess and then do your seam. Back tack to begin, make sure it's folded evenly and then stitch all the way around. Now, if you want this neckline slightly wider, the neckline band that is, you can make your strip wider. So mine was four centimetres, but I do allow a little for trimming off inside or surging, overlocking off if you want to neaten it up. You can also trim it neatly and do a zigzag stitch on the inside. That is entirely up to you. If you want it narrower, you could do it narrower as well. Stitch that all the way around the neckline. Now, once you have your neckline on, what I like to do is turn it to the inside and on the right side of the fabric, I'm going to top stitch here. That just keeps it all neat and lying flat, but you don't have to do that. You can just finish it and press it to the inside. I just feel that extra step keeps it all lying down nice and flat and it looks a little bit more professional. Sewing just inside the neckline band so that it's all pressed downwards. And just use your foot as a guide. Follow it round and try not to stretch it as you go. Now our last job is to hem our sleeves and our bottom hem. Now as before, I would suggest folding it under twice and doing a zigzag stitch, a narrow one on and off. Alternatively, you can use your overlocker, a serger, to stitch it first. You could use your blind hem machine if you have one of those or attachment. But for the basics, for people just beginning, I would turn it over twice and zigzag on and off, catching where you've folded and then onto the bit below it all the way around. And that just gives you that extra stretch. Do that on your cuff sleeves and on your bottom. You may want to try your t-shirt on first to check that the sleeve length is exactly where you want it and adjust accordingly and pin it. So here we have the long sleeve version of the t-shirt in the blue colourway and as you can see the fit is true to size, so I went for my usual size on the measurements. I measured myself first and I chose the corresponding size and it fits perfectly. So the size is good, as you can see. The neckline is a nice shape and the sleeves are just the right length. So now I'll show you the red one being worn. So you can see this one has a longer hemline and a slight curve and the blue long sleeve t-shirt we have cut and hemmed straight across. Don't forget to like this video to save for your projects later on. All of the items used today will be linked below in a bundle so you can choose your fabric, your pattern, your needles and your cotton and it will all be added to your cart as a bundle to come back and make this project. So here's what you need to do. Come onto the Minerva website and create a free account. When you create a free account, you can communicate with sewers from all over the world and join our lovely sewing community. You can save fabrics and ideas, watch videos such as this one, and collect your own portfolio of ideas of projects to make later. Another thing we'd like you to do here at Minerva is to join the Minerva Craft Club. When you join the Minerva Craft Club, you will get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. So that's a really good deal. Don't forget to like and follow Minerva and you will get new video content every week. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this so long and I hope to see you again here soon. Bye for now.